Okay, um, really interesting what Nana was just saying about uh, trees at different, I guess, Shinto, Shinto shrines in Japan, sacred trees belonging to different gods and goddesses. Um, I've long thought that the Oum Grove would be a key to understanding um, Celtic pantheons, if you like. But I think so much law has been lost that we have to reinvent it um, or rediscover it or whatever. And kind of doing that with the Oum Grove by seeing uh, the birch tree as corresponding with Ellen and now with this conversation, uh, the Rowan tree corresponding with Brigid or Bridget uh, Brigantia. And my own feeling is that the entire grove is a circle of gods and goddesses, really. Mm -hmm. um, but I refrain from creating any dogma, but I do encourage people when they're collecting or creating their own grove that every tree does have a divine spirit behind it, personified in whatever way you want it, you know. Um, so free of dogma, but that the tree is the abode of a god or goddess or the or whatever, you know, you kind of know what I mean. Um, so this presentation is about the Rowan tree. This is book two of the grove, and this is my Owen. Uh, Rowan steak, they just look so good together. Uh, I just find there's a swan there, swan on the cover. Uh, tickles me. As I was saying about Rowan being a tree of joy, I, I find it very joyful. And I'll talk about my Rowan steak a bit later on. Um, Rowan has quite a few names. Probably the most confusing is mountain ash. Uh, I say confusing because it's not related to the ash tree at all. Superficially, their leaves look very, very similar, but there's huge differences too. For instance, rowan has bright red berries and ash has no berries at all. Um, so it's only their leaf shape that is similar. Ash has uh, its seeds, like little helicopter seeds. They're called keys, ash keys. Um, but they're quite different trees. The, the rowan is part of the rose family uh, and the ash is not. Um, so, yeah, strange name, but rowan also has other connections like witch's tree or service tree and, and so on. Uh, in the Bryatheroum, it's remembered by one of the Bryatheroum as the friend of cattle. And I think this is to do with its law of protection. Now, each of the little red berries has a little five pointed star on the berry itself and you can dry those berries and make lucky charms or necklaces or beads out of them. And it was a thing certainly in Yorkshire and I think in other places, places in northern Britain where farmers would plant rowan trees in the corners of their fields as a protection thing. The pentagram is always a protective symbol. Um, <clears throat> now, this has been a bit of a puzzle to me because we did this book and there's 200 pages of lots of people's insights about the Rowan tree and the goddess Bridget. But I can't find any evidence that says the Rowan tree is sacred to Bridget. I can't find a source for that anywhere. Yeah, it's often repeated and people say traditional folklore or, or cunning magic or, or whatever, but I, I actually can't find the written source of evidence for that other than word of mouth. Um, but that's very interesting because ironically, the Oum Grove could offer up some evidence for that because in the Oum Grove, the Rowan corresponds with uh, the sun traveling from 27 degrees Capricorn to 15 degrees Aquarius, in simple terms, it's the tree that takes you to Imbolc. 
Now, in bulk is the Celtic festival that's sacred to Bridget. So that's fascinating. You know, it, um, someone needs to turn their microphone off. Um, so yes, uh, I'll talk more about Bridget and uh, in bulk in a little while. But going back to the idea of uh, trees representing goddesses or, and gods, it's a fascinating image in my mind that, you know, from the zero moment of the yew tree and the beginning of a new year cycle, uh, there's kind of like from the winter solstice, there's the rebirth energy. And then the number one tree is the birch and that's Ellen. And then Ellen's name means ray of sunlight. So there's kind of this rebirth of the yew tree and the ray of sunlight. And then as the sun goes from birch to rowan tree, it's traveling along the ecliptic uh, from Capricorn to Aquarius. And it's almost like Ellen is passing on the baton to Bridget. And Bridget's primary symbol is a flame. So with yew tree, birch tree and rowan tree, you kind of have this rebirth of the sun with one tree and then this ray of sunlight with the birch tree and then a living creative flame with the rowan tree. That's incredible kind of poetic imagery of just the fires of inspiration or the, 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 the beginning of light rising and stuff. <clears throat> Bridget's eternal flame uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. It, it goes way, way back. Um, the, the Bridget law that we have written down is from Ireland, in which she's a triple goddess. Uh, but I think I'm right in saying that was first written down round about the ninth century, which is okay. But there are older um, archaeological insights from Roman times, the, the Romano-Celtic times. So in Northern Britain, there are um, altar carvings of the goddess Brigantia. And um, she's just a earlier aspect of Brigid. Brigid or Brigantia just means the high one. And on one inscription for Brigantia, she is called Celestial. And uh, in the Grove book, I talk about that in some detail. This does take you back to the queen of the heavens and the constellation Cassiopeia, which is at the midpoint in the Milky Way between the winter stars and the summer stars. And in most ancient cultures, she's the queen of the heavens, <clears throat> whether like Isis in Egypt and, and so on. <clears throat> so for the Northern Britons, 800 years before the Brigid law of Ireland was written down, they were celebrating Brigantia or the High One as their main deity, if you like. She's a protective mother goddess, equipped like Minerva because the, the artwork is Romanized. So she's given a spear and a shield and so on. But she's also given an omphalos. And an omphalos is a sacred stone or navel. It represents the center point of all things. And so Bridie, Bridget, Brigantia, as well as being the goddess of the rowan tree, she's also the center of the grove in many ways. She's the center of every living person. Now, <clears throat> modern druidic ideas and modern pagan ideas started coming back or being rediscovered around about the 1800s, there was some little bits of awareness waking up in the 1700s, but it's mainly the 1800s. <clears throat> and when you get to the end of the 1800s, the, the mystics and occultists of Britain, mainly around London, started what was later called the Celtic revival or the Celtic twilight. And these are people like Fiona MacLeod, and W.B. Yeats, <clears throat> and um, they were very aware of 
a new era of spiritual awakening, breaking away from the patriarchal paradigm of Christianity. And one of the acknowledged new beginnings that they were paying attention to is the so-called age of Aquarius. Um, and that can sound very new age and very hippie, but it is actually an astrological, astronomical reality. You know, the winter, sorry, the spring equinox sunrise aligns with certain star patterns or constellations, but that shifts a little bit. About every 70 odd years, it shifts one degree. And so the spring equinox was aligned or still is aligned with um, the age of Pisces and gradually it's going to shift to the age of Aquarius. Uh, there's different mathematical <clears throat> formulas for figuring out when the age of Aquarius begins. Some people believe it has begun, other people think it hasn't begun yet. Um, and these big ages last a long time, they last for about two and a half thousand years. Um, so the age of Pisces has been with us for over 2000 years and a lot of people equate it with um, maybe the Abrahamic religions, you know, uh, Christianity and Judaism and Islam and, and stuff that this kind of patriarchal thing has been strong for over 2000 years or about 2000 years. And before there was the age of Pisces, there was an age of Aries. And before that, there was an age of Taurus. These are just natural bigger cycles of time. Now, coming back to the Celtic revival, uh, people like W.B. Yeats, who was a member of a, a cult group called the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, the, the Golden Dawn that they were talking about was the dawning of this age of Aquarius. And from a Celtic perspective, it was very quickly realized that the main figurehead or deity for the age of Aquarius is Bridey, Bridget Brigantia, simply because um, the sign of Aquarius, <clears throat> the rowan tree, the sign of Aquarius holds in bulk. It's the midpoint throughout the Aquarius sign. So for the next two and a half thousand years from a Celtic perspective, it's Bridget, Bridie, Brigantia um, that is gonna be sitting in the throne of heaven on, on all of that, you know? And it's way beyond our lifetimes. It's about a thousand years from now, but there will be a cosmic in bulk. Halfway through the age of Aquarius, there'll be a cosmic in bulk. And um, so a lot of Celtic mystics like Fiona MacLeod and, and um, William W.B. Yeats, in their poetry and visionary work, they would talk about this goddess of the coming age or goddess of the stars. Uh, in Wicca, she's the star goddess and, and she holds this eternal flame. And, and so all of the Bridget Bridey stuff is loaded with that. Some things to think about with Brigitte's tree. Now, um, my little stake. Comes from a place in Cumbria. Uh, a stake is a way of doing a bigger Oem grove circle that you can work in. So if you've got little twigs, you know, a lot of people have twigs this sort of size for each of their oem, and you can space them around and make a circle and sit inside it. You can have your own little grove wherever you go. And expanding upon that idea was the stakes where it can actually go out into a field and make a big circle, make a big sacred circle and, and, and work within that. But as a wand or a, a connection, to a rowan tree, it's also a place. And, and I really wanted to get this idea into people's head that, yeah, you can buy OM sets, but you've got to gather your own because the gathering of your own is so important because it's a connection between you and other places. So it's not just 
a piece of rowan wood. This piece of rowan comes from a specific hill in a town called Penrith in North Cumbria. And then the hill it comes from is called Beacon Hill. And it's so, and Penrith means uh, red hill. And the town of Penrith is made of this dark red sandstone that comes from this Beacon Hill. So the, the thing is then, um, it was a, uh, a significant town or settlement. In Dark Age Britain, it was a place uh, in an area called Reged, uh, which was a territory that belonged to Urians and his son, Owain Apurian. And their Northern Kingdom, which we now just call the Lake District of, of Reged, was the last British kingdom to try and stop the Saxons from invading from the East Coast. And ultimately they fail, of course, and, and their territories are lost. Um, the point is uh, the, the main archeology span in that area are all these Brigantia altars. There's about eight or nine inscriptions to Brigantia in the kingdom of Reged and stuff. So it's a glimpse of what would you call it? Ancestral tribal, awareness so this this point i was trying to make is that when you're gathering your piece of wood for your own oam grove or, or your sacred circle each one is also a portal to a place you know so when i'm holding this it's not just a piece of rowan it's also a connection to a, a place that's significant you know and that's down to what's important to you it could be your grandmother's garden doesn't matter. It, it could be the, uh, the the wonderful landscape of Sedona. It, it doesn't matter. But each of your 20 pieces of wood are also a connection to the spirits of the land and the ancestral memories of that land. And I think that's really important for the next kind of stage of working with the Oum is that, you know, you're inside your grove, you're meditating, and each of your 20 trees is a portal to a sacred place as well as being an astral or psychic temple you know or, or yeah there's just so much there anyway that's my 20 minutes and i'm gonna turn the recording off and we're getting to doing some meditating <laughs> <laughs>